Good afternoon everyone. We are glad to welcome you all today. This is the third webinar in our Building Intelligent Apps Using Einstein series. Today, we are going to see a live demo on video-based analytics using Salesforce Einstein Vision. Now, our CEO, Mr. Andy Giri, is going to give a brief introduction about SoftSquare. Over to you, Mr. Andy. I am absolutely delighted to invite every one of you to today's webinar. SoftSquare has been delivering over 500 Salesforce implementations over the last 12 years. Our practice covers the length and breadth of the Salesforce ecosystem, right from sales and service cloud, all the way to the latest industry cloud for consumer goods. We were featured in last year's Dreamforce among the top 20 PDO partners globally. We launched our work.com practice. We did several webinars educating our customers and prospects on how Work.com's wellness surveys, shift scheduling, and health cloud can help companies reopen in a safe way, triage infected personnel to professional healthcare, and effectively leverage their healthy workforce. Next slide, please. Thanks to availability of computing resources, memory and storage space via the cloud, AI has become mainstream in recent years. We all have felt in our daily lives the positive effects of AI via Amazon recommendations and Apple Siri and various other tools. Augmenting human intelligence with AI has become practical and is being democratized now by market leaders like Google, Microsoft, IBM, Amazon and Salesforce. We at SoftSquare want to assist our customers build and deploy intelligent apps that would reduce their costs and increase the efficacy of their workforce. Leveraging Salesforce Einstein vision and our own AI algorithms, we have been building applications that will help with detecting masks and promoting social distancing. Dr. Alexander Peter, our data scientist, is going to present the third of our Einstein webinar series, Einstein Vision. Alex and his team are going to explain how the various features of Einstein Vision can be used to facilitate mask detection for Salesforce customers today. Welcome to the gathering, Alex. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, thank you, Mr. Andy. Uh, today, our focus is on the uh, mask detection in real time. So uh, we at SoftSquare have different solutions uh, for the different uh, COVID-19 reopening um, initiatives, for instance, health screening, shift scheduling, and contact tracing. So uh, as we have seen, simple solutions such as a mask and social distancing has significantly reduced the infection of this pandemic. So we built AI solutions around the mask and social distancing, and we're going to showcase uh, those uh, products today. Now, uh, last few weeks, we looked at how Einstein vision can be used for mask detection and capacity monitoring. So let me go ahead and show you how the capacity monitoring and um, uh, mask detection is kind of combined together. So we, we initially started with the health screening and uh, Tableau. So we used Tableau to detect the hotspots in which areas there is a, a concentration of uh, infections and then managing it accordingly. So we kind of blended data from Tableau and uh, work.com and kind of brought it together using the work.com work center. And this is in, a, in our first webinar, we targeted the health screening and Tableau. And then we looked at shift management how to manage the locations, the capacity for the locations. And we used again, the shift management module from work.com. And then finally, we, we looked at contact tracing and in contact tracing, we looked at uh, different aspects such as um, the social graph, the, the, amount, the different uh, touch points for an employee. And then what we realized was this contact tracking uh, uh, tracing, the contact tracing was a very manual process. You would have to fill out a form and you'd have to say how many uh, personnel that you have interacted with. So it was a very manual effort. So what we did, we created a SoftSquare contact tracking bot 
It's a mobile application that runs on your mobile device and it detects the proximity of two mobile devices based on the Bluetooth low energy uh, technology. Now, we can also use QR code, GPS, Wi-Fi, and other technologies. Uh, we went with the Bluetooth uh, low energy uh, for our initial release. It's in the Apple App Store and Android. So we're in the process of uh, releasing it to, to general public um, very shortly. So we're in the process of testing and the beta testing and getting all the, the different uh, tuning and everything else. So that's what we've been doing for the past month, trying to get this application refined for production. And um, we're glad to announce that I think the product is ready. And if you're interested in uh, being a beta tester, please uh, uh, let us know and then we can go ahead and add you as a, as a beta tester. Okay, so that was uh, contact tracing and tracking. So the tracing part comes from Salesforce and the tracking part uh, comes from uh, SoftSquare. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the, the big picture. The big picture is SoftSquare is focusing on these three key areas, employee health screening, contact tracing, and shift management tools. And we're using Einstein AI to help us automate this process so it's not a manual entry. Now, when you look at the mask detection, one of our main focus areas was to detect a mask or a no mask as uh, school openings, public sector, private sector, as um, an individual or a group, are they, as they're walking through, uh, we can detect and we can do two things. One is we can set up an alert system that can use the work.com notification and it can uh, broadcast through that, or we can go ahead and uh, count a capacity for a specific location. So that was kind of a side effect of the mask analytics. So when we started building the mask analytics and we were detecting the video frames and cropping out the faces and processing that information, we also came, we also came across, okay, so we can also count the number of individuals in a location. So that's where the capacity monitoring and mask analytics is kind of baked into uh, the system. And then after we did the mask detection, we went ahead and tackled the next one, which is social distancing. So we were able to put a bounding box around the different objects, the different uh, people in the screen, and we we're able to detect the distance and see if they're overlapping, if they're not overlapping. And also this could help with uh, crowd management. And also if, if it's a, a mall or if it's a school area where you want to enforce social distancing, this is a, a good way to um, enforce it automatically and also enforce it in real time. So today our topic is mostly focused around real time. Um, so let me go ahead and first uh, give you uh, kind of a, a big picture of the, uh, of the landscape of what happens when a video stream, uh, uh, information from video is being processed and that qualitative information, because it's images, so that's qualitative, we use different techniques to make it more quantitative and plot it in a map and create more actionable insight. So that's kind of the ultimate goal is to take all the sensor data that is qualitative in nature and that's continuous in nature. That means there's a lot of data coming in and we're going to process it and make it digestible and easy so that a performance dashboard can be used to take action. So that's kind of the ultimate goal is to give you that full end-to-end -end workflow. So saying that, uh, let's go ahead and um, actually do a live demo. That way you can actually see how this is working in action. And once you see the live uh, demo, uh, then what we're going to do is go through the uh, high level architecture of how it works. And then our engineer, our AI engineers are going to go deep down and drill into the details of how it actually works. So that is the first part of this uh, webinar. Then the second part of this webinar, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, some use cases and best practices on how to use Einstein uh, ecosystem to solve some complex business problems. 
So let's go ahead and start with the first part, do the live demo. So let's see uh, how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and um, come out of this. Uh, in the chat, uh, we're going to send you the link so you can also follow along. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, so this is the URL. Uh, let me see if it's in the chat. So we'll put it in the chat so you can also click and follow along. Okay. I'm going to get our campaign manager to help us uh, put this link in the uh, chat. Uh, Purnima, could you help us um, put this into the chat, please? Yeah. Okay, great. So um, Purnima is our campaign manager. She's the one who sends the email and follows up with you. So if you have any questions or if you need any kind of a demo, uh, she's the person to reach out to. And she's going to reach out to you after this webinar um, with, the, with our information. Okay, so now let's take a look at this one. So in this example, let me go ahead and walk you through the, the whole process, how this whole system uh, works. So we're gonna start with looking at the SoftSquare artificial intelligence platform. So in this platform, there are three key areas. One is the object detection, and another one's the object classification. And the third one is work.com Einstein analytics. So the way the system works is the soft square <coughs> component here on the left side takes the actual video footage. And what it does is it processes the, the video and takes the different frames of the video, looks at the face, crops the face out, and sends that information to Einstein for object classification. So what Einstein does is it looks at those different images to see if there is a mask or if there is no mask. So that part is done by the Einstein AI vision. So all the AI, the artificial intelligence, all the computation is pushed down to Einstein's AI vision. And then once that classification is done, that data is now loaded into work.com and from work.com it gets loaded again into Einstein analytics for the visualization. So there's two parts to this. One is the actual object where this information is stored and another place is where you're looking at this information and that's being visualized. Also there is the work.com command center which uh, I'll show you in a minute. So the command center you're going to see on your demo screen shows you the, the dashboard where you can see notifications and alerts. And also uh, when we do a deep dive, our AI engineer is going to go ahead and show you how the notification works in the uh, work.com command center. Okay, so this is kind of the high level software uh, artificial intelligence platform. Uh, SoftSquare does the object detection. Salesforce Einstein does the object classification. SalesforceWork.com Einstein Analytics does the visualization, notification, and loading it into the uh, command center. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at that. <clears throat> So in this case, let's just go ahead and take a look at this, uh, this video. I'm going to go ahead and play this video. As you can see, this is a video stream that has one scene. This is a second scene. And those are the two scenes. So in this particular video, there are just two scenes. And if we were to take this office setting, and let's assume that there was a a IP camera pointing at the conference room. Let's go ahead and see how the system works. So this is the video. And let's say when we process this video, this is what happens. The video gets processed. 
The images get extracted out. All the faces are identified at this point with and without mask. And then Einstein analytics goes through this process. And then it detects the different folks in the video with and without mask. Now, let's go ahead and wait for it to process. And then you can see here, it gives you a dashboard. This is again a work.com command center dashboard. And um, we're going to walk through each one of this uh, later in this uh, presentation. So this is kind of the high level overview of how this whole process works. So let's take a look at the, the school setting. So here's your school. And here are all the students with the mask. So I'm going to click the play. You can see it. OK. So there was just two very basic screens, one here and one there. So one, one scene has everyone wearing a mask. Another scene has everyone not wearing a mask. So now what we need to do is crop each of these individual faces and detect if there is a mask or not. So step one is to crop each one of these faces. So as you click on select, uploading the video, processing the video. Okay, I have a caching here that, let me go ahead and open up another one and do it. So let me, sorry. <clears throat> There we go. Pause. All right, as you can see, uh, once it identified the faces, now it's going to go through to Einstein to detect which faces have the mask and which faces don't have the mask, as you can see. I just stopped it in the middle, so the stream just stopped. But you can see here how it detected the student with the mask and the students without the mask. And then again, it goes out and, and puts out the, the dashboard. Um, so that is how uh, the, the user interface works. Now, this could, be, uh, this could be a school, a mall, a public space. So you can take any IP camera and send it to these mask detection system. And it's going to take frame by frame, crop and detect. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, how this architecture uh, works. Okay. So we saw how this whole system goes in sequence. We're using an algorithm called CNN, Convolutional Neural Network, to do the cropping of the face and sending it to Einstein AI. So that's these soft squares uh, proprietary CNN algorithm that we're using. And again, the algorithm is open source, so you can modify it to fit your need. And we have changed some parameters in there to make it more accurate. And also, we have included this concept of um, streaming. So let's take a look at that. So now here is the, the high level framework of the whole process. How does this work? So if you take a look at this diagram on the left side, you have all the different streaming systems. It could be a camera, it could be a, a hospital with um, different uh, monitoring equipments, it could be a factory, it could be a retail store. And as you can see, uh, the source, the sensor is just constantly putting out signal. Now, that's this whole concept of continuous streaming. So 24 seven, you're getting this video stream. And how do you process that? How do you take that streaming data, organize it in a way that it can be managed and then stored in a way that it's compressed and easy to process. And then you do the computation, which is where you take that information, the, the video stream or the, um, the temperature data or some kind of a, uh, factory sound of equipment. So you're measuring the, the sound to see if a particular equipment is going to, uh, going to be defective. You can predict some of those behaviors. So all those different sensor data can be brought in 
and then load it, load that data into Salesforce and provide analytics using Einstein analytics. So that's kind of where this, this future is going to be is where your data is not going to be, there's a start and stop. Your data is going to be continuous. So for instance, you may have uh, a small device that, that your, your kid has in the wrist that measures the heart rate. And you're continuously getting that heart rate information. So at any given time, you know if your kid is in danger or not. And that, that's, if you think about it, that just from a safety perspective, maybe you have a pool or there is um, something else. It, it's, it's just amazing how you can use this continuous data and have some processing on the edge where it can filter out the noise so that you can only take the signal that's required. And that's where uh, the SoftSquare framework, we have different layers and you can mix and match different technologies. If you wanna go with Amazon for some of your communication, go with um, Microsoft or IBM, you can mix and match the communication layer and you can mix and match the storage layer depending on uh, the volume and the speed that you need. You can go with different technologies. And then you go right into computation. Again, computation is where you aggregate, you process the data and run machine learning algorithms uh, to, pro to classify and cluster that information. So that's where you do the supervised and unsupervised learning of your data. So that's the kind of the full uh, framework uh, that we have at SoftSquare. Uh, so we're not just focusing on uh, video footage, but also many other agnostic uh, sources. Okay, so now I can open up for questions on this slide. Um, if anyone has any questions, please uh, feel free to interrupt me and ask me. Um, Purnima, can you open up the um, uh, channel for uh, Q&A, please? Alex, uh, and, uh, as Mr. Andy Giri said, we have some new folks and he would like to introduce them to us. And uh, Mr. Giri, please go ahead. Sure. It is an absolute pleasure to introduce uh, Jesse Phillips, our key client um, who makes uh, a very large uh, uh, suite of UI components for the desktop mobile apps um, and a very key cust uh, customer of ours for the last 10 years. Uh, in fact, uh, most of what we do as services for Sync Fusion, which is what uh, Jesse, Jesse works for, is uh, what we call fractional admin services, which is we, we are a one-stop shop for Salesforce talent and Salesforce execution. Um, and uh, once again, Jesse, we, you helped us with our Toronto show. I know Dan McDonald is also on the call, so he, uh, he was there in that, in that meeting we had last uh, June. And uh, welcome to the gathering, if you have a few words to say. Uh, sure, Andy, it's certainly a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's, it's always amazing to see the new technologies that Salesforce is bringing to bear on the world's problems and concerns. And who knew uh, 10 months ago that this kind of thing would be um, something that would be very valuable to, to many companies. And it's certainly interesting to see. Uh, yeah, I've been with Sync Fusion for probably about four and a half years, and it's been uh, my pleasure to work with Software. Uh, I think that uh, Vinyash and I, who is who I communicate with most of Software, are communicating most weeks, <laughs> whether it's messaging or um, phone calls and things like that. And it's uh, certainly a very valuable relationship um, for our team, uh, for me personally, uh, in order to, you know, either run new ideas by or um, get expertise in terms of services or um, just run through existing configurations that we have and review those against, you know, common or updated standards and make sure that there aren't any, you know, improvements or, um, you know, turns towards higher efficiency we can take. So, it's certainly very, very nice to see the webinar, and thank you, Andy, for that nice introduction. Sure. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for your kind words. And I hope that you will get something out of this and um, or get some knowledge out of this in terms of the Salesforce ecosystem and what Einstein is capable of doing. And we're going to do a series of webinars. Uh, uh, we are also doing two products uh, called uh, Admin Grid and uh, uh, Media Manager. And we're going to launch them in the App Exchange, and we'll do webinars based on them, on them also. Thank you very much.
Great, thank you, um, thank you. And if you if you have any specific questions, uh, please feel free to interrupt me. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go ahead and do a deep dive into the technical detail for about five minutes. We're just going to kind of jump in and look at how this mask no mask works inside of uh, Einstein, like how easy it is to use the Einstein playground to create the model, and then. Uh, we're going to see how uh, seamless it is to take that information into work.com and have a very comprehensive dashboard. So we're going to go ahead and have our AI engineer, Nanda, and our work.com engineer, Kanmani, to, to present this, uh, this part of the um, presentation. So um, uh, Nanda, it's all yours. Go ahead. about creating a mass detection system for office reopening, we wanted to utilize the Salesforce Einstein AI capabilities to full extent. And we want to use other AI technologies wherever necessary. Salesforce Einstein AI's vision application is capable of identifying objects if it is trained to do that. So we have trained our Salesforce Einstein AI's vision application to identify and distinguish people wearing masks and not wearing masks. This we have done by uploading thousands of random people images with masks and without masks. Also, we want to use Salesforce Einstein Analytics capabilities. So we passed all these mask identification data to Salesforce Einstein Analytics to discover insights, predict outcomes, and find recommendations so the customer can act quickly according to the outcome of Einstein Analytics for their company policies. The whole plan is to input live camera footage from office entrance. Identifying and cropping individual faces from the live footage is not available in Salesforce AI system as it is not their core area of interest as a CRM. So we have decided to use two cutting edge open source technologies to do that work. Host those images in Salesforce Heroku. From there, Salesforce Einstein will pick the images and continue the identification process. Now our Salesforce Einstein Analytics Senior Engineer Kanmani will show you how the vision data is stored in work.com and analyzed using Salesforce Einstein Analytics. Now let's look at the Einstein image classification algorithm. We have built a model to detect mask or no mask. We have uploaded the image. As you can see the result here which is 100% accurate. Now let's look at the result from the camera feed. We can see the status and the prediction accuracy here. Finally, let's look at the work.com command center. Here you can see health screening, contact tracing, and shift scheduling matrix. In the command center, we have also embedded the Einstein analytics dashboard. On the key metrics, we can see the maximum occupancy for the location from the shift schedule model integrated with Einstein vision to detect the number of employees in that location with and without mask. Here we can see mass detection statistics over time and on the right side this guard shows the vulnerability level of employees without masks and if I scroll a little bit down here an alert triggered if the mask violation is detected. So we have done with the demo hopefully all of you understand the process thank you so much. Thank you Kamani great so uh, what we are looking at is the command center from work.com and this is how the data flows through. So let me go ahead and bring up another uh, slide here. Okay. So what you just saw was the Einstein's analytics work.com interface where you saw all the gauges and graphs. Now, let's go ahead and expand on that and just take it to the next level where the uh, SoftSquare's uh, lead Einstein architect, Rajkumar, he has put together a full package where he looked at all the different Einstein offerings uh, and then he kind of has a has a demo where he goes through each one of them in a deep dive. And one of them is in the financial services area. And another one is in the um, marketing cloud 
another one's consumer goods. So he has gone through each one of these different sections and identified a use case that could be useful uh, and practical. So, and again, the, if you look at the service cloud, the part identification is a project that uh, Salesforce at SoftSquare has been working closely with uh, different vendors. Mr. Giri, do you want to talk about what you're doing with part identification? Is that something you can share with the, with the team here? Mr. Giri, oh, yes, can you okay. hear me? I yeah. was mute, so I just unmuted oh, myself. Okay. So what Sorry. we do with, uh, with this technology, uh, Einstein Vision, is for one of our key clients to, uh, to uh, they, they are field service and their field service agents take pictures of their, of their work. In fact, it's field installation of devices. And then they take a picture and there are, there are millions of them on the, in the database or in their file system. And they want to ensure that uh, the data that is uh, entered by the person and the picture that they, they, that they take after that uh, tally together, right? So they take a, they, they go to the site, they install something and they say, this is a device I installed and then they put a picture. Sometimes it, it's inconsistent. And the client wanted us to use AI vision or Einstein vision particularly to detect, in fact, if, if, the, the, if the, uh, the accuracy of the data in consistency with the, with the images, and that's one of the projects we are undergoing now. And I think in the next uh, three or four weeks, we will have it successfully completed and have a, more of a showcase on that. But this is, a, this is a popular use case. And then of course, in consumer goods, the planogram, right? As you can see, the planogram check. So instead of going and uh, entering form data as to what they see on the screen, uh, on, in reality versus on the screen, uh, technologies that Salesforce developed uh, in coordination with uh, Einstein and the Consumer Goods Cloud, which is being built now. And uh, th this is an excellent use case of, of uh, detecting items in a, in a shelf, in a, in a retail store shelf. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and if, you, if you think about it, uh, the, the, the planogram is, if you look at that use case, so let's say, for instance, if you wanted to count the number of uh, items in, in a shelf, uh, or if you wanted to look at if the placement is correct, do you have the right cereal in the top aisle? Um, now, instead of eyeballing it, you can take your mobile device and just point at the shelf or point at the aisle, and then you can uh, get the, the deviations. And that, I think, is huge. And you can use that for many other applications. This is just the beginning of how you can use visual data and, and process that visual data for, again, as we discussed, the qualitative to quantitative. How can you take video, sound, picture, motion, uh, location? How can you take all that information and, and add some uh, quantitative analysis to it so you can manage performance uh, and, and maybe perhaps improve the performance? So let's go ahead and now uh, take a look at these four case studies. And after we look at the four case studies, we'll open up for questions. And, and discussion. I think this is the, the final, um, you know, uh, four case studies that uh, our lead um, Salesforce Einstein certified architect is going to, uh, to present. Um, again, it's about 10 minutes. So uh, uh, it, feel free to interrupt and uh, if you have any questions or ask questions in the chat and then right after this presentation, we'll go ahead and, and uh, open up for questions. We, we have some exciting um, developments on the um, social distancing uh, application that we want to discuss uh, for next week. But we'll do that right after this, uh, this webinar. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and have uh, Nanda, who is uh, another engineer, and Raj Kumar. They're going to work in sync uh, to coordinate this uh, presentation. Okay, so um, Nanda, it's all yours. Go ahead. Let's start with image classification using Einstein Vision and Language Model Builder. This is what the Einstein Playground looks like in your Salesforce org. It has a wide range of features like image classification, object detection, natural language processing using sentiment and intent. Today, I am going to focus on image classification. Initial step to start with image classification is creating a dataset. 
Building a data set is very easy. Before we build up a data set, we need to work on a use case. And for today's presentation, we will work on an image classification use case where I built a data set that allows you to classify whether the person wears a mask or not. What I did here was I collected images. These are all images of various people who wear masks and without masks. Then I organized them into folders and I collected about 650 images of each category. Then I compress this file and upload everything to the Google Drive. Once we are done with this, we can upload this data set to the Einstein Playground. Now I can go to the image classification tab. Just click new button and copy paste that Google Drive link and hit create. In a couple of moments, a data set gets created and it's really fast. For this demo, I have already created the data set and the name of the data set is masked people data set. The next step is to create the model. You will have a question that training a model sounds pretty hard. I'm sure everyone thinking about involving a data scientist, but honestly, it is as easy as hitting train button and a model gets created and it might take some time maybe anywhere 5 minutes to 20 minutes depending on how large your data set is. For this demo, I have already trained the model. Now I am done with creating the data set and training the model. Let's head to the prediction tab. Select the source data set. Then choose model here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and drag and drop an image of person who wear the mask. Let's give a couple of moments here. Yeah, as you can see here, Einstein correctly classified this image as with the mask. You can see the confidence score as well. It is 100% accurate and this is pretty amazing. Again, I'm going to drag and drop the another image of person who is not wearing a face mask. As you can see here, Einstein correctly classified this image as without mask. And see the confidence score again, it is 100% accurate. Alright, I'm done with this demo. Now, our, si our Einstein solution consultant, Rajukumar, will give a demo on Einstein mission use cases. Thank you. Over to you, Rajkumar. Thank you, Nanda. I am going to explain four main use cases in Salesforce Einstein Vision. The first use case is Social Studio in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Einstein Vision for Social Studio provides a collection of pre-built image classifiers or social marketers. If you look at the image, from the image shared in social network, Vision automatically identifies company logos, detect which brands are present, where the photo is taken and what other items are present. With that information, marketing team can do better marketing. By default, Social Studio recognizes 60 scenes, 200 foots and 1000 objects. Second use case is Field Service Lightning in Salesforce Service Cloud. Companies can leverage pre-trained image classifiers or train their own custom classifier to handle a vast array of specialized image recognition use cases in field service. For example, with similar looking parts and serial numbers, dishwasher repairs are often complex. Now a dishwasher repairman who needs to replace a water inlet wall can simply snap a picture of a wall and Einstein vision for field service will quickly identify the exact product type, saving time for the customer, repairman and company. Third use case is insurance innovation in Salesforce Financial Services Cloud. With the uploaded photo of a car involved in accident, immediate estimation and motor claims can be done with the help of Salesforce Einstein Vision. An insurance agent can just verify the system generated numbers and approve motor insurance claim. The fourth use case is retail execution in consumer goods cloud. Einstein Vision for consumer goods cloud 
delivers an image recognition and object detection solution that enables EC inventory, planogram and merchandising compliance checks. For example, a rep can take a picture of a shelf in the store and immediately understand if it is set up correctly without having to manually count and input the data into their system. Now, field service representative store visit in Salesforce Consumer Goods Club. Here, the planogram check is done through Einstein Vision. This demo is shown through field sales rep's mobile device. For this, I created three different products, prawn cereal, corn flakes, and oat cereal in Salesforce Consumer Goods Cloud, which includes the photograph of the cereal boxes. Also uploaded photographs of these cereal, three cereal boxes in different combinations to train the Salesforce Vision AI platform. During his daily activities, field sales representative log in through his mobile into Salesforce Consumer Goods Cloud. You can see his visits, route maps, tasks to do, trip notes, customer information from his mobile itself. Now we are inside retail execution. You can see the visits for a particular day. Today I have a store visit in Austin, Texas. By selecting a visit, you can see all visit details, tasks needed to be performed during the visit and route map to store if needed. The sales rep needs to select a visit and start the store visit. After starting a visit, we can perform any task assigned to the particular store. As we are going to test only Salesforce Einstein Vision, I am going to select Planogram Check. By clicking Planogram Check, the system will take me to Planogram Verification. So here, there will be option to take photograph to check the planogram. So if I click the take photo option, the system will give two options. One is do the photograph through camera and another one is uploading file. So I am selecting uploading file and selecting the file of the shelf. Mobile is uploading the file and I click done. So the system will start doing the planogram check with already existing data in a vision. So it will take a couple of seconds. So it will upload with the uploaded image. The system will check exactly whether uh, any valid images are there which is uh, the system is uh, trained for so now it got successful the planogram got successfully completed and we are getting a review button so by reviewing the planogram check it will show the diagram we have uploaded with what are the objects it has detected in the diagram four cereal boxes two corn flakes and two brand cereals if you have already defined the KPIs for planogram, system will tell the current shelf arrangement is following the norms. As inventory and planogram checks are done through Einstein Vision easily, field reps can spend less time on auditing activities and more time building relationship with customers. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rajkumar. Um, we had some technical difficulty because we, we tried to do a mobile phone streaming and that cost us some problem, but um, I, I think you get the idea how, how it works. So um, um, Mr. Rajkumar is on the, on the call as well. So if you have any questions for him, we can uh, go ahead and uh, ask at this time. And I'm gonna go ahead and conclude uh, today's um, uh, webinar by summarizing with this one slide. So I'm gonna bring that up. And this is uh, what today is all about. Today, our focus was on real-time streaming, how we can take data in real time and process that data and load it into work.com. So you can see a dashboard, a dial or gauge or any of those um, visualizations. Now it's not a straightforward, the streaming data is not as straightforward as 
just static data. So it, it requires an infrastructure. You need a message queuing, Kafka, RabbitMQ, and you need some type of continuous integration, continuous processing. And that's where the industry is going, is you no longer would actually connect to your data source. You'll always be connected to your data source. So this whole all, all the time connected continuous streaming um, may become a reality in the near future, starting with uh, people counting or starting with counting some merchandise or maybe a, a camera in a retail store looking to see if there's a queue or if there's a line and then it alerts the manager saying, hey, there's, there's a line and then it kind of optimizes. I can see this uh, real time streaming being used in fast food restaurants and, and um, uh, malls and other places uh, for performance uh, optimization and improvement. And as we talk more about having robots and other technologies, uh, having these type of uh, feedback sensors uh, is very useful. Uh, if you have any uh, feedback or if you have, if you want to attend our free clinic, uh, our campaign manager is going to reach out to you for that. We have a one hour free clinic that you can attend and I can walk you through how uh, we have done these deployments in, in uh, public and private sectors. So looking at uh, contact tracking and tracing, uh, shift scheduling and uh, health screening. These are our three areas of focus. And if you have any questions on those areas, if you want to uh, look at our previous webinars, uh, please um, let us know. Okay, now I um, give back to Mr. Andy and let's see, uh, Mr. Andy, the floor is all yours. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, I think uh, we have exceeded our time also. Uh, thank you everyone for having attended our webinar today and looking forward to future interaction. Thank you. Thank you everyone and have a pleasant evening. Thanks, bye.